Welcome to the All About Digital Marketing podcast. The show all about digital marketing, digital marketing, digital marketing, digital marketing. Brought to you by Socialink, a digital marketing agency specializing in social media and content marketing for brave brands and forward thinking SMEs. I'm your host, Chris Bruno. And as always, we're here to bring you the most actionable tips, tricks, tools, and insights to help you achieve more when it comes to your digital marketing. Subscribe to the show and be sure to share with a friend if you found something useful or interesting. You can find all the show notes and more information on www.allaboutdigitalmarketing.co.uk. Adam Hunt, thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. uh, And obviously that's because I know what you do and not everybody who's listening to this does yet. But for everybody that's listening, can you give a little bit of a heads up, a little bit of the elevator pitch? Who are you? What do you do? And then we can get right into it. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm the creative director of an unusual company uh, called White Label Comedy. So we're basically a creative agency that's powered by what I call a hive mind of uh, comedy writers and advertising creatives. And we exist purely to make funny stuff for brands and TV shows. So yeah, that's in a nutshell, that's us. There's much more to it, but that's that's the kind of top line uh, pitch as it were. I like it. And I'm liking the, already I'm liking the fact that it's hive mind driven. Uh, So I think for everybody who's listening and for anyone who's kind of a little bit confused about that, tell us a little bit more about how that works and and what that actually means internally. Well, what that actually means is that we, so we we run our products remotely. So rather than, rather than having, you know, I mean, I'm sat here in the corner of my flat in Brixton, which doubles up as my office. Um, We don't have a huge team here constantly. What we do have is the best comedy writers I've ever worked with in so my career is kind of half TV, half advertising. So it's the best comedy writers from my time in TV and my favorite creatives from my time in advertising. They work together on demand online um, through our little online writers room that we've built. And so that when there's a brief, they come together and they collaborate. And honestly, like, I mean, I, I, I don't think I really was really thinking about it much about the name, the sort of the hive mind as, as, a, as you know, and there's reference points when we started calling it that, but it's exactly that. It's, you know, it, it isn't, we could have run this, uh, this company, run, run our projects in, in a number of different ways with, with the same expertise. But what we have is all of these brilliantly creative, funny people feeding into a single melting pot and not only do you get their their own ideas, but the ideas snowball, and they you know they they combine live in the room, um, and it, it's re- it's really fun watching that hive mind, which is the only way I can describe it now. Um, go from a brief to to the finished product, you know, also super quickly. And I think one of the reasons why I love it as well is it means that we can have you know genuinely the best brains involved you know comedy writers are expensive they're often hard to book but they they do have downtime so by having a big roster of big guns and you know and some plucky up and comers but and you know they they all get a notification when we get a new brief in they can either jump in or they they don't have to it means that we've got the best talent available at any given time um and yeah we can we can put them put them to work in a in a number of ways it's, it's a lot of fun the old proverb was uh, many hands make light work. Um, and I'm guessing then from, from that sort of a system, you're bringing together a load of people and actually it probably makes things funnier because you're already mentioning like the snowball effect. So I'm guessing one idea sort of very quickly evolves and turns into another idea or a knock-on idea or something else. And you end up with this really create creative flow and creative process that's happening. Um, and that's got to be amazing to watch from from your side as well. Yeah, you you, re- you really do. And I think because of what we're trying to do here, so you know, it, it's it's hard enough to write jokes. And I'm cards on the table. I'm not a comedy writer. I just happen to have a lot of them in my back pocket. But it's hard enough to write jokes for you. Imagine also trying to write jokes that position a brand as the hero without losing any of that that punch. That's a hard task as well. So it's it's not easy. And it's the sort of thing that you know I, I, I've got clients that have hired individual comedy writers in the past. You know, guys, some of the guys that actually work with us who have you know amazing portfolios, re- really, really solid credentials. But if they don't quite chime with a particular brand or a particular brief, it's wasted money and you'll waste the money before you've seen it. Whereas with us, it's there's a really interesting, there's always a sort of moment. So when when I put a new brief into the writer's room, 
there's for the first maybe half an hour or so of, of people throwing in their ideas. I'm always like, oh, I, I don't know, if, you know, are they missing the point? Do I need to step in here? And then some, 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 something happens and it just, it clicks. It clicks, someone gets something that works and everyone goes, oh, now I see. And then it, it just, like, like you say, it, it snowballs. I can walk away, come back in a day or come back in an hour, depending on the, you know, the, the, the deadline we've got. And there's gold. There's, there's gold sitting there to be, to be sifted off. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a joy to watch. That sounds awesome. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more then actually about the, the final product, uh, who it's for, what it does, and why uh, you think it's such an important part. So obviously social media, content creation, everybody knows that that's a huge, huge opportunity still today. Uh, mm-hmm. You're all about putting the comedy into that. So explain a little bit about how you got into to that level or to that sort of side and that speciality, and also what the benefits are to the brands. Yeah, well, I think do you know what. Let, let's start with what the benefits are, because I think you, you'll you'll know, and you know, I, I know you've discussed on this podcast a number of times how there are so many brands who are just sort of slavishly putting out content without any kind of objective, without any kind of understanding of what they're trying to do, what they're trying to achieve, and also without any real me- messaging. That so much of the content that brands put out is literally just them announcing their messaging and wondering why of their 3.3 million followers, only 55 people engaged in any way. You know, there, there are lots of clueless brands out there. And the reason that isn't working, uh, you know, all right, it sounds obvious, um, but but the, the reason I see that's not working is we're all so savvy. We're so used to being sold to that if anything even comes close to looking like a sales message, unless we're already pre-sold and we want to buy it, we switch off, we ignore it. So if you put out content that just says, hey, come and buy this, please, we will ignore you. So you need to find a way to bring our guard down. And what is the best way to bring someone, someone's guard down? You make them laugh. I mean, you know, there's, there's research that I won't go into that actually shows that if uh, someone is against a brand, if someone, if someone has an unfavorable opinion of the brand, comedy content, humorous content, can bring their guard down and then bring their opinion of that brand back up to the point where that you know it can recover. So there's lots, to, lots, lots to be to be going on with there. But I think the the main thing is y- you can make people pay attention for long enough to absorb your message, and then they'll do what you want them to do, or at least you know statistically more of them will do what you want them to do. And the the other thing is, even if even if you put out a compelling, uh, you know, say say you've got an ad that really really engages with me, tickles me, ticks all my boxes, and I, and, I, and I buy whatever you're selling. Like, you know, even if, say it's a car, say I buy a car, you've not given me any motivation to share it. So that, you know, if, if it's organic, that stops with me. So that's the end of it. Whereas if you, as well as selling me a car, you make me laugh, I might share it. Or if you give me a kind of, you know, that's so me motivation, I might share it too. And so it's, it's, and it's, it's just, breathing fresh life into what would otherwise stop dead when it when it hits a person and i think that that's why it's so valuable so i think why we are so popular with our clients is no one really has well i say no one knows some people do it great but you know our, the, the sort of clients that, that come to our doorstep they know they need to put content out they just have no idea how to make it interesting you know, they've, they've, they've sort of run. They've spent a year just broadcasting their brand messages. They've run out of things to say, and they need something new. And so that's a problem we can solve even before you get around to the idea that it's going to travel further, be more effective, and actually turn your audience into fans rather than just people you're trying to sell to. I, I, there's a couple of things that you said, and I couldn't agree more with you. The first one is I'm still amazed by the number of brands that I meet who are doing social media, creating content for the sake of it. It's awful. And it's, it's really upsetting. Uh, you know, we've spoken to brands in tech and, and in various industries, and they've been spending thousands of pounds a month on agencies. I use inverted commas when I say agencies for yeah. that bit, whereby these agencies have been creating social media posts, blog articles, whatever. And I've said, okay, well, cool. What were the goals? What were the objectives? And what sort of results were you getting? And the room invariably goes silent and people go, what do you mean? Results and objectives and goals and what, what are you talking about? So I, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes anyone can make. If you don't have some form of a strategy or some form of a goal that you're working towards, then hmm. why bother doing it at all? Um, and the second thing that I wanted to bring up is actually I, I was looking at your LinkedIn profile earlier and what you've just mentioned there about the the virality, of, as it were, of content that is a bit humorous, that is a little bit different, that, get, that gets that kind of tickle moment, um, is that both of us actually have ended up sharing the latest Pringles advert with Adult mm-hmm. Swim. 
So uh, again, I'm a massive Rick and Morty fan. Seeing these sorts of things happen, and again, it's it's huge for me. I think those sort of things, you know, they really do get people to engage. They get people to share it with their friends because it's something that you want to kind of showcase to other people, and you want to kind of go, look, see, this is creative. This is fun. This is engaging. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that a lot of people miss, uh, especially again, you know, without those strategies, without those objectives, it's very hard to know what it is that you should be posting in the first place. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. And actually, the, the Rick and Morty one's really interesting because we, we've just, uh, well, I was I was asked to write a, a sort of think piece on it, um, which is going out in a, in a particular, I won't mention names, but going out on a particular blog later today. And have you, I don't know if you've seen the, so obviously their big thing is they're trying to get us on board with flavor stacking. Now, I don't know whether that is to try and sell more crisps or whether that's just because they want it to be kooky and fun, but it's something they've tried to, to sell us on for the last two Super Bowl ads. And the last two ads were attempting to be funny, but failed to be funny for very specific reasons. And this is the first time they've cracked it. And I I think they've cracked it because they they brought in people that understand how to write comedy. You know, it's I think you can get your ad men and ask them to try and be funny. But instead, you should get your comedy writers, get your funny men and ask them to write the ads and and that will give you more. You've still, you've still got the oversight from the admin to make sure it doesn't go against what the ad's trying to achieve. Because at the end of the day, you know, there, there are people who have more expertise than, than we do at um, the, you know, the, the honing a, a, a brand's messaging so tightly that, it, that it's, you know, sort of equivalent to conversion copy but in, in an advert. But there's so many examples of bad, not funny, you know, looks like, looks like comedy, smells like comedy, sounds like comedy, doesn't make you laugh. And that's, it's, it's so frustrating when you see that. So I'm really, I'm really pleased that this, the Rick and Morty tie in happened, but it is really interesting to see the evolution. And one, one thing that I also find really funny is they've been trying to make us, one of the biggest issues with the, the original two ads is that flavor stacking isn't a thing. It's just not a thing. And they've been sort of trying to make half jokes on top of flavor stacking, but it's not a thing. To make it a thing, they've had to invent an alternative universe in a world of, infinite alternative universes just to be able to posit it as a thing that's credible and that you know it's simultaneously a brilliant ad it wouldn't have worked without the history of bad ads and a bit of a cop out at the same time i agree with you completely again and it's um and like you just mentioned there you know creating your own alternative reality within infinite realities and then using that especially with i think again hitting the right demographic yeah, that's um, that's, uh, that, that's probably going to be bigger actually than the quality of the ad. Is just that Rick and Morty demographic is 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 huge and viable. Well, I think we all. Um, so I think a lot of people actually either love or hate Adult Swim. Um, mm. And in terms of the, the the sort of programming and the the content that they've created, and I saw somebody share the other day as well. I can't remember who it was, um, but they were sharing a Adult Swim. Uh, I think it's robot chicken or whatever it was called sort of all the plasticine kind of stop animations but it was about starbucks um and i don't know if you saw that one doing the rounds recently um but it's basically about they're not not really sure what the company's going to do yet so it's either going to be really specific niche down mermaid porn uh or it's going to be coffee and uh, whilst they're doing the photo shoot unfortunately the girl who's dressed up as a mermaid and one thing or another ends up having an accident so they crop the photo and in her memory that becomes a starbucks logo (laughs) (laughs) And again, it was enough to just that tickle moment. It got comments, it got people sharing it, it got people talking about it. And I know it's not necessarily meant to be an advert for how the coffee company started or anything else, but the branding element of that piece of content is absolutely huge as well. It has a huge knock on effect. And again, hitting a demographic that I think is almost tough to reach because they are kind of blase. They're getting very clued up, like you said, about you're clearly trying to pitch me, you're clearly trying to sell to me. And they don't want to see social media content that says 20% off in fact let's be honest most people don't want to see 20 percent off unless you're already in the sales pipeline kind of thing and you're about to make the transaction but it's a real tough one for people to understand and i think there's another element i wanted to ask you about and get your opinion on um i've seen some people recently making sort of funny videos around uh, what they do so it might be recruitment or it might be something a bit more technical and they're trying to make sort of a video to get a laugh and to get that virality, as it were, I, I use that word and it's probably not the right one, but they try to get that organic kind of sharing feel to it. 
but it doesn't necessarily actually have any impact really on the sales, the brand and what the objective was in the first place. And that's got to be a challenge finding that balance. How is that something that you guys, uh, you guys work with? Well, yeah, I, th- I think that that feeds into one of the most important things for us, really, which is and also one of the most important things for anyone who's trying to trying to find humor in their brand. And notice that's what I said. Find humor in their brand, not be funny on behalf of their brand, not make jokes about the brand, find humor within their brand. I think we always start with a question that is super important. What do you want to say? You know, what is your message? What's the what what should this piece of content be about because we then need to find funny ways to say it funny ways to deliver it and then you need to you know sort of hide the message a little bit i think so long as you always start with a brand message then that content is going to deliver it you then you know you then have to make sure that you line up the jokes in the same direction as the brand message there's a lot of sort of quality control to be done afterwards but the biggest mistake anyone can make is just by going right let's try and be funny i think there is an argument for you know the the benefits of just getting getting your name out there and your message out there and you know there's a couple of examples i can think of recently that were funny videos that didn't really say much about the brand but i still went oh do you know what they're funny people and it's a people centric business and i think i'd like to work with them if if i had a need for their services i'm thinking particularly in the sort of recruitment space but but that was i think that was more of an accidental inclusion rather than a deliberate you know what they should have done is gone right you know this needs to say that we are the most people friendly, the most, you know, we're, we're the most ruthless, the most efficient, whatever it is, pick a thing, exaggerate it to the nth degree, and then use the comedy to deliver that message. And it'll, it'll, it'll be, it'll pack a punch. But yeah, I think it's really important to start with what you want to say. Do you find that a lot of businesses can't actually uh, verbalize what it is that they're trying to say? Oh, of course, of course. But I think, you know, th- that's, again, that's where our job comes in. I think it's, it's not, it's not so much that, that, the business has to tell us what they want to say. It's that before anyone makes a joke, you need to decide what you're going to say. So, you know, sometimes a client comes to us with a, you know, hundred page brand identity doc. Other times they just send us a product in the mail and they just go, here's this thing, help us. And so then I have to go, right, what, what is good about this? What are our selling points? How can we, how can we position it? And then we make the jokes. I, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's especially tricky. It's something that, as you mentioned before about brands that pump out content, not really knowing what they're doing with it. I think a lot of companies don't really think about like for me, a TV ad that that you're spending, you know, hundreds of thousands on and a post that you're putting out on Facebook this morning, you should put the same amount of thought into what the message is. Yeah. You put more money and more time into the TV ad, but you still need to go, right. What are we saying here? What are we doing? Um, And yeah, I, I think, a lot of brands think that on, you know, all right, we invested all of our time and energy into, into the, the above the line stuff, but here, here on Facebook, just existing is enough. And, and, and I think it's, it's so silly because it's not, it's never hard to just work out what they should be saying. It's never hard. You, know, you just take the product, work out what's good about it, think about how to sell it, why, work out why someone would want to buy it. Then even if you're not making jokes, you've got more than they had to begin with. But I think, you know, I, I, I think look, that that's why, there's a space for, 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 for guys like you, a space for, you know, guys like me, even before comedy was a part of, of, of what I was doing. I, th- I think a lot of companies need a helping hand. I think that's very true. And I think that's the, one of the things that, I mean, you said it as um, you start with, you know, that first question, what is your message? And it's something that's quite interesting because we're very focused on community building. We believe, you know, once you start getting involved with your community or start building a community, leveraging other people's communities, whatever it might be, it's really, really impactful. But the question that we ask before all of that is, who are you? What is it that you do? What is it that you're Mm, actually, and and, you know, you've redefined that question as, you know, what's your message? We sort of talk to companies and we say like, what are the vision, uh, vision, mission and values of the business so that we can understand who you guys are and how we're going to actually portray that. And it's quite amazing to us and successful businesses, by the way, that have, uh, you know, huge offices, big amounts of staff, great turnover, and they've kind of just been building the business. But when you ask them those kind of questions, they sort of flounder a little bit. And actually, they're not really sure. And they can't really tell you what they sort of believe in or why they believe in it. And invariably, we find that if you try to create vanilla content because you don't really know who you are, then actually what ends up happening is you create content that no one's really interested in. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. 
I, I, I always ask the sort of, I, I like having this conversation because I want to try and understand other people's point of views on it. But I've really find that that's one of the things, you know, we, we spoke to another company recently. They're talking about content and what they're going to do and how they're going to start writing uh, blogs, for example. And one of the things that they were talking about was literally the idea of we'll do a blog about X in this industry. And I said, okay, well, what side of that line do you fall on? And they were like that, why? And I said, well, because otherwise you're going to write a puff piece that actually n- literally will engage next to nobody because it will neither make them agree or disagree with the content. And what you're going to end up doing is just wasting a load of time, effort, money to push something out that actually invariably doesn't help you divide opinions and gather that community, gather that audience. So is, is that something that you guys try and put into the, co- the comedy side as well of this content? Because I'm guessing you're going to get people that go, this is awful, I don't like it. And then you're going to get people that go, this is absolutely hysterical. Well, <clears throat> I think two, two things, I guess. I think when it comes to generating content, it's, it's easier. You kind of have to force a brand to take a position because you can't really make a joke without an angle. Do you know what I mean? So you could write a blog piece that... I, don't, I remember back to university where every single essay anyone wrote was you were taught to go could be this could be that who knows and your summary was always who knows and that style of writing has somehow bled through into content marketing when it when it really shouldn't whereas with a with a joke you can't make a joke land unless you take a position um it needs a hero needs a target needs a you know needs a twist so i think in terms of constructing it, it's easier in, t- in terms of um reception i think we always target any bit of content towards the ideal customer or the audience of our client. So, you know, re- re- really simply, uh, we, we've, we've just recently finished a, a, set of, a set of tweets and funny uh, photoshops for those tweets um, for a house painting company in, in, over, over in America. So, you know, they're a local house painting, painting firm. They wanted to position themselves against other house painting firms so it's it's just jokes that play up you know don't 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 hire these guys hire us but there's always a funny way funny example there's always you know a, a witty gag that that makes that same point and once you start with a message it's really hard it's really hard for people to be offended you know it, it's it's harder to make bad jokes if you are doing it with that kind of agenda it's i, I think when people react badly to comedy it's 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 often comedy that's you know at the more at the sort of either extreme end. You know, it's either Ricky Gervais at the Golden Globes offending everyone, or it's a lame anodyne attempt at being funny that's too far towards just pointless. But in that sweet spot in the middle, you know, we we we're yet to see a bad reaction to anything we've done for a, for a for a client, and I think. Anyone outside of the target audience, they might not love it. Couldn't care less. It does the job for the the people they want to hire them or buy their stuff or whatever. So I, I think, yeah, I, I think it's it's tasting comedy is 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 uh, it's important to think about it. But it's all about targeting. You know, it, it also helps make sure the jokes land. You, you make sure you, you you know you're using references that that particular sector, that particular demographic is going to get. It's going to make them love it more. Um, so. I think I think it's just as easy to to do that as it is to to make an advert that hits a demo kind of head on. I think that's um again the the point of Ricky Gervais, and that's one of the a really good example of this. But um, and I refer to it as you know he does divide opinions massively. Like there's no ifs or buts. Mm, yeah, Some yeah. people were hugely offended. Other people sort of you know they think he's absolutely hysterical. I fall personally in the line of. I think he's hysterical. I always have. I've liked his, his comedy for a long time. Um, but actually the Golden Globes, which is really fun, is that he keeps doing it. And, you know, five years later, uh, or well, I think this is his fifth time presenting, he's still doing it. And they still asking him back. And you think to yourself, well, hang on a second. It clearly does something. So, you know, the talked about nature of that divisive comedy that he brings to the, 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 the awards is almost talked about as much as the awards themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I, th- I think that's a, that's a great that's a that's a great point, and actually, he's he's an example that I wheel out quite a lot because I think you know wh- when some people might be scared of using comedy, it's important for them to understand that they're still in control. You know that they are not hiring Ricky Gervais to sta- you know to live tweet for them for a week. They're it's still marketing material. So yeah, I, th- I think I think I think, and um, but also the the controversy. You know, I think you've hit the nail on the head. The Golden Globes are successfully and quite cynically harnessing that controversy in the same way that, you know, the occasional branded tweet that might be a little bit in, you know, 
could offend some people. You know, there's, there's some great examples of brands that sass other brands with 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 their comedy online. And you know, sometimes that seems like it's been coordinated. Other times it seems like it's just someone take, taking the mic. But either way, you get stories about the stories about the stories. You're generating free press coverage. And I, I think there's 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 a even when comedy offends people, there is a route towards that being powerful and valuable. I agree again. And um, in terms of the Ricky Gervais thing that you said there, literally just kind of twigged in my head. And I was like that, wouldn't it be amazing to get Ricky Gervais to run a brand's oh social God. media for oh a week God. or even just a day? I, I can't imagine anything would be funnier to watch. Like, obviously that's for me personally, but... Um, I mean, look- any 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 brands listening to this? If uh, if you're interested, if you if if that if that tweaks you, right here right now, say so a, a, coll- a collab between White Label and Ink will uh, will make that happen. I'll I'll get you Ricky. I, I probably won't, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but how awesome would that be? So I mean, like in my head, I'm just thinking because when you've seen those funny tweets and some of these mm. brands nowadays are really doing a good job. Um, and I think one of the examples I refer to a lot, but it's KFC UK in Ireland uh, mm. on Twitter. They are fantastic. And, you know, they've done all the things that you've mentioned. They sass their competitors. They they get them involved in conversations, whether it's organized or not. It doesn't matter, but it's fantastic because it's this idea and this belief that, you know, it's not a scarce world. There's tons of content. There's tons of people. There's tons of opportunities. And it doesn't mean that we can't all have a bit of fun. And yeah. actually, you know, by bringing that life into a brand you look at their twitter account and you remember that they literally sell fried chicken and chips it's incredible to see the kind of engagement and conversations they're having considering they sell chicken and chips you know that's that's such a big sort of jump most people would say you know it's not really an interesting thing you can't really make this very fun and yet they have so i think that's always um was always something for for people to to take into consideration and also as well i think too many people are worried about taking themselves too seriously yeah. If that makes sense. And they kind of like the high brow, high level, this is what I believe, or this is what I think. Um, on LinkedIn, especially, you sort of see these posts and so many people as well that are happy to copy and paste other people's posts and no credit and one thing or other to try and showcase as if they're mm. hugely smart or they've done something great or grand or whatever it is. But again, I find that 90% of these posts end up being either ridiculed to a certain extent or have missed the point of, I want to understand who you are. So I think you and I actually ended up sort of chatting and talking through some other, so that through some other opportunities. I can't remember how we ended up talking, but then we started a conversation. And then by that point, we were both interested in each other and talking about the podcast. And then we sort of organized this to come on together. But that happens through your, you know, who you are and actually yeah. being true to who you are. And I think there's too many people that maybe try and hide that. Or like you're saying as well, you know, if you can't, if you want to bring comedy to it, bring comedy to your message, to who you are, to what you do not trying to be funny for the sake of being funny, which actually has nothing to do with anything about you, your business, your brand, your messaging, your, your objectives or anything else. Yeah, no, I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with you hundred percent. I, I, I think that's, that's the one of the things I, I say most often is don't try and be funny. Come up with, your you know work whether it's you know like like if you're working with you guys work out who you are work out what you what you're you know but get the messaging straight and then find a funny way to express that message don't try and be funny because you won't do it you won't pull it off you're not you're not funny um and you know e- even the people that seem effortlessly funny aren't it's it's com- comedy is comedy is a skill and, and i think so something i, I want to sort of bring up and something that i want people to understand is that comedy is Part art, part science, but the science bit is really easy to understand. And to my mind, the, the simplest definition of a joke is it's when two disparate ideas that shouldn't work together magically do, thanks to a perfectly placed twist that kind of position, positions them in a, in, a, you know, in a clever way so that our brains jump that gap between the two of them. It sparks a little bit of joy because, like, oh, yeah, that, that, that's, you know, that's funny. That makes sense. And it makes us laugh. Now, the... The base of any joke is that obviously you then have to finesse it to make sure that it triggers the right kind of emotional response and it connects the two dots in the right kind of way. And that's where you get good jokes, bad jokes, funny jokes, you know, slightly raised eyebrow, okay jokes. But that idea that all it is, is making two different things fit together and make sense actually opens up massive opportunity for content. So this, this is something that I say to clients that, you know, even if they're, even if they're not going to be working with us is, or not working with us on everything, is 
just finding ways to relate what you do to a, a breaking news story, to a relatable thing going on in people's lives, in a, you know, in, in a way that jumps that gap, can open up 10, you know, 10x the, 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 the amount of, of content you could write when you were just sat there writing about marketing or when you, when you were just sat there writing about shoes. It's, and you could, you, you could start doing it and then get funnier and no one would notice. I, I think just, just find ways to relate you and who you are to the world and there's content right there. It's something that um, we were, <laughs> I was with my business partner uh, a couple of weekends ago and we decided we were going to start recording. Well, we're going to do a recording of a podcast episode, the two of us together in the same room. Mm. First time we've actually both been together. We're decentralized as well, a bit like yourself. So there's four of us in the core team, plus all the freelancers and other people that we work with. Uh, and we do everything online. So just like you, I'm sat in the little corner office in my flat. Um, yeah. And literally, we were both together. So we were really excited about this. And we were testing out my ATR microphone, plugging directly into um, the iPad Pro. So we were recording this and we put up a, a, an iPhone as well to record it and everything else. We've ended up publishing the video because it was an absolute disaster. <laughs> so, you know, it was on GarageBand. Uh, my partner clicks uh, record. Um, I then sort of looked at the screen after we'd been talking for about a minute and realized that it had limited it to about eight bars on GarageBand and then stopped recording. Uh, we had all sorts of issues and one thing or another. And literally the two of us looked at each other and was like that. Right, we're chucking this up on YouTube, right? And we both just started giggling. And went, yeah, of course we are, because again, it's for us. It was honest. It was kind of funny. We were both laughing about it. It showed again the reality of the situation. You know, not everything goes right. Not every time these things happen. Doesn't matter what you work in. You know, content filming something does goes wrong, or you lose a piece of footage, or a microphone that doesn't pick up, or whatever it is. But we just found it really funny. And again, we weren't scared of having people say to us, oh my God, you're failures or you're not very good at what you do. It was just a case of, you know, literally natural human error. This happened. There you go. Have a chuckle. And we've had a few people sort of message us back going, you, you guys are embarrassing. It's amazing that you've managed to get 30 episodes of a, of a podcast out so far. But again, we didn't mind doing that. And I think there's a lot of brands and people especially that are scared to come across human. And I think that's a real shame because actually those are the best moments, you know, knowing that there is actually a human being behind a brand or especially yeah. in the early days, small to mid-sized businesses, usually, you know, you're, you're a few employees. You guys are the brand. You are the yeah. culture. You're the tone of voice. You are everything about it. You're the personification of the brand because it is just you. And actually coming across as that is massively powerful for the brand itself as well. Do you know what? Testament to that power and testament to how much we're used to brands not being human the second any kind of customer service interaction has a bit of humor a bit of wit and warmth there's a new story you know it, it's front page on the daily mail website it's mirrors running it you know sainsbury's replies to to you know, the, the letter of the kid talking about tiger breads and and the world's the world's going crazy because we're so used to brands being faceless even now even when there are brands trying it that you get you know you, you get a story out of it and and, and i think that's over and above just the benefits of being a brand people enjoy interacting with. Couldn't agree more. Um, okay, cool. So listen, uh, cause we, I think by the sounds of it, you and I could chat like this for <laughs> probably a few hours. Definitely um, but, uh, but for small businesses out there, if people, <clears throat> and you know, we often talk to companies that aren't ready for agencies. They're not at that point yet. They haven't got the resources. Um, and that's fine. But what are the sort of things that people can, can try and take a bit of an action step today? How can they try and introduce a little bit of comedy easily without maybe going too far or overthinking it and coming across like a very bad David Brent? Um, what, what sort of things can they do? I, th I think well, look, first things first, look at how the big brands do it and, and, and think about how they're doing it. There's one thing that we've noticed is there are, you know, all right, there, there, there are a hundred different ways to write a joke, but in you know in uh, especially in tv ads but also on on online on on social there are a number of methods super simple methods that that the brands use time and time again and they're ones that anyone could apply so for instance as as, as silly as it, this sounds silly saying it out loud because everyone knows it's how you write comedy you exaggerate but just start with a benefit of your brand and exaggerate it until it's silly until it's funny or you know start with a consequence of not using your brand and exaggerate that that's if you look at the spec savers adverts that is all they are they just exaggerate the consequences of bad eyesight until it's funny you know and until you are playing volleyball and slap down a seagull until you are naked in a kitchen with gordon ramsay because you thought it was a sauna it's 
super easy. And because you lined it up with your brand message, it's it's honestly risk free. So I think you know exaggeration in either direction is is the best way. Find a way to make your brand the answer to a question. I think that's the other thing. That's that's to me the heart of you know the, sort of the best Twitter jokes from from brands. The best pieces are when there's a breaking news story and they decide to find a way to jump on board. So really great example from Lego recently. I, I, th- I don't know if you remember the day that uh, Tesla unveiled their shatterproof car and it shattered. Lego within six hours had a really brilliantly photoshopped, maybe even had a photoshop for it, uh, a, a Lego Tesla that was just a single brick. And they were like, you know, genuinely shatterproof. And it, it, jumped on board a breaking news story i feel like for me the lego story was was as big as as their story and it lined up with what they do so you know again so it's free so just look at what others are doing and do it but i think the most important thing that i want all 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 brands of all sizes to think about is and there's, there's a real negative that i want to turn into a plus so we've all been there where you've put out a post that you know whether you thought was going to be good whether you didn't have any clue because you're clueless but get zero reach you know there's carlsberg for instance you know 3.3 i talk about them a fair bit 3.3 million facebook followers a post of theirs uh, a few weeks back 55 engagements i bet you it was probably seen by you know less than 500 people literally past the screens less than 500 people now normally for us that's an awful thing we're like oh my god how how are we ever going to market ourselves without that kind of reach but if you make a joke and it doesn't engage your audience, so long as it's not offensive, those platforms quash the reach. No one sees it. So you can experiment by putting out content that you think might be good, you think might be funny, and when someone, you know, when it tickles your, your audience, it will take off and it will get massive reach, or at least bigger reach. You'll see that difference. They won't see the ones that, didn't go so well. So don't be scared of failure. I, you know, I, I think so long as you're not offensive, so long as you point everything in the same direction so that it, it doesn't seem left field and then you're not making a joke that tells people not to buy your product, it's way less risky than you think because no one sees a bad joke. I think that's a, a really good point for everything to do with digital content, especially and social media. Just keep trying things. Yeah. Um, you, you know, the amount of people I've spoken to that go, social media just doesn't work for our business. And you go, okay, so what's that based on? They go, well, we started a page and, you know, we posted a few times and we never got any sales. And you go, <laughs> right, okay, yeah. that sounds awesome. Well, you know, glad that that's uh, worked out well for you. Um, but the reality is that, you know, well, what have you tried? And they go, well, we just post up the latest offers. Okay, great. Have you done anything else? No. Okay, well, try things. There's yeah. nothing like literally like you mentioned as well, a bad post will get next to no reach. So you're not going to get people mocking you and annoying you and telling you how bad you are. And if the worst comes to worst and it's really bad and you're really upset with it and it really didn't work out, you can delete it. But the idea being that what you want to try and do is keep experimenting with different types of posts. And, you know, we're not just about the comedy side when we're talking to clients. And again, depending on the system or the software or whatever it might be, the app or the service that they provide, sometimes for us, it's about education. Sometimes it's about, you know, sales and actually converting people. Sometimes it's about giving somebody something and a reason to engage with your brand so that they understand a little bit more about you. Sometimes it's literally about a great way for your team, your sales staff and everybody else just to be able to use it as part of their outreach reach program. But there's a hundred different things that you can do for each of those options. And most brands aren't, they're not trying, I would say 5% of them or even 1% of them. They're just kind of knocking out stuff. And again, we, we talk about it loads as, you know, the bullhorn effect. They're stood on the corner of Oxford street shouting, or they have that big sign up that says golf balls this way or whatever it might be. And they're not realizing that that just doesn't work. And especially not online and especially not when you're competing in, you know, I've referred to it as an attention war. I genuinely believe that's what we're in. You know, everyone is on multiple screens, 95% of the day, whether it be TV, iPad, phone, laptop, screens everywhere. And we're seeing too much. There's just too much. We, we communicate with brands. We, we listen to what our friends are doing. We watch videos that our friends are doing. We watch stories. We watch all sorts of things that are happening in the world. So how you cut through that is very much a case of finding the right ways to cut through that, like you mentioned, for your target audience to make sure that, one, you're not just making an ad creative for the sake of winning a prize. 
something that's very important. Um, but actually, too, you're making an ad or you're making content or you're making a post which is taking you towards your objectives. And once you've identified those objectives, it's easy because you can post 20 different things and you'll start to realize which ones are helping, which ones aren't, which ones are taking you towards your goals and which ones aren't, which ones don't work at all. So you can stop doing them altogether. And it's just a case of experimenting. You know, we're constantly, I've been doing this now for 11 years of social ink. Um, and when we meet with clients, they say, right, well, how do we do it to make sure that we get the ultimate results and one thing or another? And we say, well, we don't know yet, but we can tell you the rough idea. We can tell you how the process will work. We can tell you how you optimize things. We can tell you how we'll figure out what your audience actually likes. But, you know, without having ever started and without ever having done anything, anyone who's promising you results in 30 days or less and they're going to make you a million pounds in sales is just simply lying. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. And I think, do you know what? It's all about iteration. I think I think you, you've hit the nail on the head in, in terms of, you know, you got to put stuff out, see what works and then do that better. Then put stuff out, see what works and then do stuff better. And I think that's the same whether it's content that's just content, you know, or whether you're trying to make people laugh. I think one thing that we've been playing around with recently, actually, that's, that's really interesting and, and producing fascinating results is using, so obviously a lot of, well, I'm going to say 90% of the social stuff we do is, is strictly organic, um, but using Facebook ads as a route to finding or optimizing a brand's sense of humor. So I think one thing I love about Facebook ads is that you can tar- you, don't, you, know, you don't have to just target their existing audience. You can target anyone you want. You can, you can split test, you can A-B test, and you can make sure that people don't see the other version of the ad. And what we've been doing, which is really interesting, is starting, starting with, you know, say for instance, your, your sort of the objective for that, that campaign is just page likes, or something, something cheap and simple and, and, and high volume. Starting with one funny advert that we think will achieve that, doing three or four versions that have tweaked, you know, really, really subtly tweaked copy or images or style or, you know, swaps in a different punchline, swaps in a different hero for the story, swaps in a different villain, whatever you want to do. And just in the same way that you A-B tested a proper ad, you know, line by line, bit by bit, doing the same to find a brand sense of humor. And it's amazing the difference, you know, swapping out the foil for a joke can have on resonation with a particular audience. And you can get data on what that audience actually reacts to really quickly, really efficiently and relatively cheaply. And I think it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's something we've only just begun to dabble in, but it's a, it's a really fun place to play. And I think whatever you can use to get inside your ideal customer's mind in a data-driven way, whether you are selling them with jokes or with just with content, I, I think is, is really helpful. I still think Facebook ads, uh, social media in general is one of the biggest opportunities for businesses, especially SMEs. It's huge. And the power, like you said there, A, B testing, understanding what people do and don't react to, understanding that information, not just clicking that boost post button on on your page, but actually making it into an experiment so that you can see what's good and what's not and what's working and what isn't so that you can replicate, iterate, keep building on that and just keep getting better to the point where people People actually do love your brand and they love what you're doing. Um, We all have our favorite brands for particular reasons. Uh, And when it comes to advertising, you know, for me, one of the big ones that I always loved was Old Spice. Huge amounts of humor, constantly kind of iterating on it, then building on it, then doing another version of it, then doing something different with it. But again, they're just doing things in a way to test, to see what works, to see what people resonate with. And then you can start to build up that kind of, um, that kind of repertoire and, and, and even a series of adverts that are based around the same kind of concepts or themes. And I find that kind of stuff is, is remarkably interesting if it's run as an experiment. That's the hardest thing for, for everybody out there listening. Run these things as an experiment. There's nothing wrong with that. Look at the data and make it a little bit scientific in terms of this one is this because of X. The photo might be different. The punchline might be different. Your, the text of it might be different. But keep testing things. And even if you start with a very, um, a very disparate kind of very two two extremes. So for example, one could be a very technical kind of post and one could be a very simple post and a very funny post or a very charming post. Those two things will already give you a really simple indication of whether or not your audience is more interested in the technical side or if they're more interested in the the, the feeling side. And these little things help you to kind of understand what your audience really wants to engage with. 
Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Always be testing, but then make sure you take what you've learned and apply it to organic. I think one of the one of the things that I, I, I sort of saddens me to see is brands and companies that have gone, oh, we can't, we can't really, we can't really achieve organically. So, so we must have to spend loads of money on paid social. And I think you need to be using paid social for learning about your 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 audience to feed that back into organic, so that organic carries itself and travels further you know on its own behalf and also obviously you know paid has a paid has a strong role when it comes to actually closing a sale but don't don't just think because your organic stuff hasn't worked that the only option is paid you just you just need to make the organic better and 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 a great way to do that is is learning learning via paid Agreed. And uh, for anyone out there that thinks without the budgets, you can't do anything. I, I will say as well, in the last three years, we've worked with several brands that are in industries that can't use paid Facebook ads, paid Google ads. Um, and therefore, there is you know, still capability and ways of doing it, leveraging other people's communities and keeping to do these tests as well. So there is never an excuse of if I don't have a million pounds, I can't make this work on Facebook. You would be amazed what you can do. And even with a very small budget, you'd be amazed at what you can learn as well. So I think that's very important. And thank you, Adam, for uh, for, for telling everyone about that as well. Uh, really quickly then, before we wrap up, uh, Adam, what's your favorite social media channel for you personally? Do you know what? They've, they've all got... They've all got different pros, different cons. I think it's probably Twitter just because everything is short and sweet and digestible. And I think when a, you know, when a great joke takes off on Twitter, uh, it, it, go, it goes like wildfire. So I, I think I'm going to go with Twitter. But, you know, I'm, I'm really intrigued by LinkedIn at the moment. I, I, I think it's a really interesting platform to be in. And I, I think obviously it's also where a lot of, where a lot of our target, you know, our own clients are, are and i think people are getting better at leveraging that in a more interesting way but it's you know it's always going to be kind of of business to business so i think for big brands funny stuff on mass um twitter although you know it's it's harder for it's harder for brands to grow an audience on twitter by brute force you know I i think on facebook they can grow an audience by brute force just by paying for it twitter it's harder to do that and maybe that makes things that succeed on twitter also uh Feel like more of a success. You know, you, you can't you can't fake success on Twitter, and that's that's why. Yeah. So, having th- thought around the, around the question, I'm going to give the award to Twitter. <laughs> I got to be honest, Ricky Gervais put more comedy into the uh, to the way he uh, he announced the award for uh, <laughs> for anything else. But thank you very much for uh, for your time today, Adam. Where's the best place then for people to connect with you? Would it be Twitter as well? Um, do you know what LinkedIn or just on, on our website whitelabelcomedy.com I think you know we, we, we are such an odd company to even exist that step one for anyone intrigued is just get you know get a handle on what we're all about I, I, I think I think so yeah whitelabelcomedy.com but we're easy to find just, just google us and, and you'll you'll stumble upon pictures of my face and ways to get in touch so yeah well come, I will definitely add I will definitely add all the links that you've mentioned as well into the show notes. So you can check those out as well on all about digitalmarketing.co.uk uh, and you'll find links directly to Adam, uh, his profiles and where you can connect with him and the company. Adam, thank you so much for your time and for your insights. I think this has been a fantastic conversation and I'm hoping that we'll get a chance to do this again sometime soon. Lovely. Thanks, thanks for having me. It's been, it's been great. Thanks, Adam. The All About Digital Marketing podcast is brought to you by Social Inc., a distributed digital marketing agency specialized in delivering results through online campaigns. Whether it's content marketing, social media marketing, online advertising, or web design, we've got you covered from strategy through to delivery. If you're struggling with your digital marketing, get in touch today by simply visiting www.socialinc.co.uk.